Bishop Arthur Kennedy from Boston joins us again for our conversation on the new evangelization. And we just finished last week, Bishop, talking about the history and how we got to where we are. Um, you were speaking about the French Revolution and wanted to finish up on those points. Please do. Yes, I just wanted to mention something about the United States because the secularization in the United States is, uh, is a little different than what happened in Europe, but it's the same basic principle. And that is that it begins to um, interfere and in, with, uh, with uh, religion. It's one of the reasons we have at the present time concerns about freedom of religion in the United States. But the way in which uh, it happened was mostly through, in the United States, was mostly through literature, not rather through a revo revolution. And this was uh, particularly a conflict be within Protestantism between the uh, Calvinists and the Unitarians. And um, it came out in the writing of the various uh, people, especially in New England and New York, uh, Thoreau and Emerson and Hawthorne and so forth. And what, uh, what arose was something that became very important in shaping our vision of ourselves, and that is uh, what uh, a writer of, of literature who in Yale some years ago wrote called The American Adam. And the American Adam is a very interesting, different Adam than the Adam of, the, of, the, of Genesis because the American Adam is not fallen and he doesn't need to be redeemed because he hasn't done anything. And so therefore, there is no need for redemption. So now, if you see the, the conflict with uh, the claims of, of Christianity and, of course, Catholicism especially, of the need to be redeemed through the blood of Christ is, has, is taken away from people's awareness of themselves. Right. It's a new self-definition. Mm -hmm. uh, and Flannery O'Connor speaks about this. She says, I write for uh, people who are aware of the incarnation and the important need of being redeemed. Uh, but there is already, she knows, in the 1950s, um, a lack of an awareness of need, of it, this need. And a reaction to that from the church was the Second Vatican Council to yes. get this new evangelization yes, out. Explain precisely. to us how that came to be. Yes, yeah, so uh, really it began in the, uh, with, uh, with Pius XII with his encyclicals uh, on the church, on scripture, on, uh, yeah, on the mystical body, and on uh, the modern world and liturgy. So he prepared in that in, in, by his, uh, his work, and then jo Pope John the Twenty-Third, Blessed John the Twenty-Third, announced the fact that he wanted to have a council to be able to bring the whole church together to be able to address the importance of what he called a new event, a new um, Pentecost, actually. And uh, this new Pentecost would be a way of bringing back to the entire world the light of Christ and the, and the mystery of, of the presence of God. And your role in Boston, Bishop, is to help implement this in parishes. Um, so give us an idea of how you do that. You have themes that we talked about that mm -hmm. um, speak to this new evangelization. Yes, well, we started off this year with the, uh, for the year of faith with uh, a recovery of, the, of, of what is the classical teaching of the church on fundamental matters. So we had a, a program called Catholic Faith Essentials, which is available on our, our webpage, uh, yearoffaithboston.org. And, uh, and so we had um, various uh, fundamental themes from the catechism. What are the classical Catholic teachings? And then what we have coming up next year will be testimonies and witnesses from, first of all, some of the young lay people, men and women in the archdiocese, and then also with uh, some seminarians and some of the clergy. So we hope to be able to bring together a certain way in which, because new evangelization is going to be, re requires a great deal of a sense of the testimonies of people who actually have faith and who can s explain that faith in a way which relates to the quote you used last week from Pope Benedict about the mystery of the evangelization being opening open to the mystery of the, of the gift of love which calls for love in return. So that's one of the major themes of the new evangelization is the mystery of the givenness of the love of God. In a beautiful statement by Pope Benedict, but I think once you investigate the new evangelization and, and get maybe re-catechized yes. um, to discover your religion and what Catholicism is, then people, I think, are drawn into it. Do you see that? Yes, absolutely. And I think the thing that we're doing, because it's related to the Cardinal's project for Disciples in Mission, which is the reorganization of the parishes in the archdiocese, and we will be engaged in having teams to go out to the new, new collaboratives and work with the, um, the 
the teams that are established by the pastors. And catechesis will be one of the ways. But we will have a number of other suggestions about the way in which a re uh, a re-evangelization will be able to occur so that every parish becomes, as the Cardinal hopes and intends, uh, a center of evangelization in the archdiocese. And the faithful's response to this so far? Well, we've had some very good responses. We for the first one that we, uh, the leadership program that we did on new evangelization was down at the pastoral center. So everybody in the pastoral center has gone through this program of what the new evangelization is. And it, it, was a won it was wonderfully received. The pastors have already gone through the program uh, who the, for the 12 new collaboratives. That was wonderfully received. And so I think we have a dynamism. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fantastic. The new evangelization bearing some fruit. And I can guarantee if people look into it, they'll be drawn in. Because once you read a little, you want to read a lot more. I think so. That's great. Thanks. Thank you for your time, Bishop Thank you. Arthur Thank Kennedy. Thank you, John.